Hey everybody, welcome to segment three of Pilates P's and Q's. Today's segment is going to be all about knees. And I wanna thank Katrina for her interest and question in regards to what more as movement practitioners we could be doing for osteoarthritic knees. Now I wanna start off the segment by saying, I'm going to be approaching this as a movement coach, mobility specialist, and Pilates instructor. So if you're having knee pain, I highly suggest you getting assessed by a PT specialist, or at the very least, meet with someone like myself who could help look at the overall joint function and health of not only the knee joint, but the joints above and below. So today I'm going to do a breakdown of knee controlled articular rotations or knee cars which is the first thing and easiest thing that I recommend adding to your movement practice because it will take you through all the varying degrees of rotation that's probably missing both in knee flexion and knee extension in your current movement practice. But before I do, I cannot stress enough how easy yet effective doing knee cars is on a daily basis because not only does it teach you to self-assess what's going on in your joint that day and overall, but it will also train your nervous system to have the strength and tension needed to stabilize the knee in the varying degrees of stress that we put on it as people that move actively, both as people that move in a daily life, but also as movement practitioners. Just training in patterns or what we would consider predetermined lines of fascia may not address each individual's joints or surrounding connective tissue. Because our lives and how we have actively moved our whole entire lives develops the lines of tension or extra thickening that happens within, within our connective tissue. And that varies whether you're a whether you've been a dancer your whole life or you were a football, collegiate football player. So addressing specifically the joints will affect, in turn, the surrounding tissue, therefore also affecting the lines of tension in the tissue, predetermined or not. So your active ability to have strength and tension in your knee at these varying degrees actually determines your true knee function. Passive ranges are going to be exactly that, just passive. Remember, we learn movement and patterns through our joints. So if you want to be able to have more access to more movement and the ability to learn more movement, you have to have good, high-functioning joints. So the easiest way to get started is adding rotation through knee cars. And so you can sit in the most comfortable position. I'm on the floor, but you can easily do this in a chair or even standing. But I like to do it seated in the beginning. That way we can lock out the upper thigh. So we wanna lock out any additional parts moving and really just hone in and focus on the knee joint. So we're gonna start with the knee bent and I like to use this position where we take the opposite arm, reach it underneath, grab the opposite bicep, and then lock out the top of the thigh. Now, if this position seems really complicated, I'll show it one more time. Opposite arm underneath, grab the opposite free hand bicep, and then take the hand, wrap it over the top. Again, if it's too complicated, basically you just wanna hold this thigh from moving and just start by act, seeing if you can access the tibia rotation at the knee. We don't want any of this moving. Just at the knee, can this bone here rotate inside the knee? And yes, it should rotate both ways. Then just try extending the leg and seeing if you can, again, get that knee rotation. You can see this bone and tendon moving around here and then extend a little bit further. Don't lock out your knee because then you can't actually rotate. And then see again, does that 
knee, does that tibia move? And then we'll actually get started into knee cars. You're gonna take that locked out position if you can, or just hold your thigh, okay? So remember, we wanna work the rotation in all the varying degrees of knee flexion and knee extension and have strength, tension, and control through those ranges. So you're gonna start by internally rotating. Make sure it's not your foot. Your foot's a reflection of really what's going on here. Keep that internal rotation as you extend. Don't lock out your knee, externally rotate. Make sure that bone is moving and bring it all the way in. Internally rotate, extend, externally rotate and pull it in. Couple things, internally rotate, make sure that you're feeling tension as you do this. As you extend, you're not settling for this internal rotation that you have here. You're trying to continuously internally rotate. Then as you externally rotate, same idea. You're continuously trying to find more rotation as you bend. That way you're maximizing the ranges, strength, control, and tension throughout these varying degrees, not just settling for what you think you have at those ranges. And then of course you go to both directions. Stay externally rotated. Keep externally rotating as you extend. Internally rotate always fighting for more rotation as you move through these varying degrees of knee flexion and extension. Now, another thing, we wanna make sure that it's a nice smooth movement, that it's not jerky, that the leg doesn't extend because we don't rotate when our knee is locked out in full extension. And of course, that you're going through all those end ranges as you do this. So how does this tie into Pilates or any movement practice really? Well, the knees fall right in between the ankles and the hips and we basically go through all these varying degrees, whether we are seated, kneeling, even like this. I have external rotation going on with my knee flexed. I have a little bit of knee internal rotation going on. And if I don't have that those ranges in my knee, it's going to affect everything above and everything below. But that's why all the different joints up and down that kinetic chain are really important to make sure that they're functioning and have those rotational aspects in all those varying degrees. Just like in training, you would wanna progress this by being able to, to access these ranges in varying positions, standing, seated, sideline, with hip internal rotation, etc. And then you would need to progress this with load because we load our, constantly load our knees in varying degrees. Also to note, always work the joints above and below. And yes, there are cars for all of those. You can find them on my website. This is why I can't stress enough that it's really important to work with someone who can also see what's going on with your knee cars and all the surrounding joints and determine what needs to be worked on and techniques and tips for you to be able to access more ranges so that you do have the appropriate function and joint health in all the varying joints. Please take a look at the links in my bio. I have an online kin stretch program starting. It'll go for two months and you'll have access to this kind of breakdown in movement as well as a full kin stretch class and access to me so we can discuss things like seeing if the joints are functioning and things that you could do on a more individual level to address any of your needs. I hope that helps. If you have any questions or movements that you would like me to discuss or cover, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Bye.